So this is the HP Envy 15 X360. And before I get into the review, I wanna do a little sponsored laptop deal segment by Best Buy. They want me to tell you about their best laptop deals happening right now. And the first one is the MacBook Air. Now this is only $50 off, but the reason why I'm bringing it up is because if you're looking for a MacBook with an M1, the Air is the best deal. Don't waste your money on the Pro, don't waste your money on the iMac if you don't have to. Get the Air because you're getting the best bang for your buck and you're not going to see that much of a performance difference. The second one is even better. The Asus Q507. This was selling for $850 and right now you can pick it up for $750. And this thing is stacked. R7 4700U processor by AMD, 256 gigabytes of SSD, eight gigabytes of RAM, and most importantly, an NVIDIA MX350. The next one is a Surface Laptop 3. The four is out on the market, which means the three is getting heavily discounted. And you can pick up one for $400 less at Best Buy. Doesn't matter if it's the Ryzen or Intel model. And finally, if you're looking for a convertible, check out the HP Pavilion X360. This is a two-in-one, it was selling for for $800 and right now you can pick it up for 650 bucks. If you're interested in any of these deals, there'll be links to it in the description down below. Now the one thing that HP is doing very well is making the NV lineup, the more affordable lineup, look very classy. Like this is a metal chassis, it looks clean, it has a black grayish look to it with the HP logo in the middle. Sure, it doesn't have the crazy gem cut design of the Spectre, but it holds its own. Now this is a metal chassis, but it does feel a bit like plastic and there's a little bit of flex, but it's not nearly as bad as the HP Omen 15. The other thing to note is, is that this is a convertible. So you can completely flip this display 360 degrees and use it as a tablet or purchase the pen and you can, of course, draw on the display. I will say this though, the hinge is kind of stiff when you open it up a bit, but as soon as you get back to about, I don't know, 90 degrees, it feels very loose. Like if you're holding this up, like this screen is going to tilt backwards. Now the weight on this thing is about 4.11 pounds. So it's not the lightest 15 inch Ultrabook by any means, but I still think it's light enough that you'd be okay carrying this on a daily basis. There's a lot of IO to work with here. Like on the left hand side, you have your USB port, HDMI, USB type C. If you want Thunderbolt, you gotta go with the Intel model, but because this is using Ryzen, it's just a regular USB type C port audio jack, and then on the other side, you have your barrel connector for power, another USB port, and a full-size SD card slot. Now, probably not a big deal for a lot of people, but you can't open up this laptop with one hand. You have to use one hand to hold the deck down. Hey, nice deck, Dick. Thanks, Dirk. It's real cedar. And because this deck is so big, some of you might say, why didn't they put a numpad? And look, you have two options. You either put a numpad on this and then put the speakers on the bottom, or you go with upward firing speakers. Me personally, I'd rather have the upward firing speakers. Now the typing experience is okay. I find the keys to be a bit too mushy compared to the Spectre, but it's fine if you're typing on them for a long period of time. There's a fingerprint scanner right beside the Alt key if you wanna use Windows Hello to log you in. And the touchpad, it's centered and it's 19% bigger compared to the previous year. Now the touchpad doesn't have the same finesse as a true glass touchpad. It's fine, but it's nothing compared to, let's say, the touchpad on the Surface laptop. Now, when you open up this display, there's a bit of wobble. So like if you're typing on this very aggressively, the screen will shake a little bit and the display is okay. Like there's two versions of this. There's a cheaper one that's only 250 nits, but if you spend $80 more, you get this one here. It's 16 by nine, and I feel like this would have been a good opportunity for HP to incorporate a 16 by 10 display instead but it's not a bad panel. Like it gets close to 400 nits of brightness. The color gamut's good. And I feel a lot of people spending the extra money on the more expensive one will have a, a good display for design work. Now, since the speakers are on the top of the deck, if you're curious how it sounds, I'm gonna compare it to the Surface Laptop 4 and you guys let me know which one sounds better. Now the price on this is $1,039, at least the review unit that I have here, but I think it's pretty fair considering it's packing the latest Ryzen 5000 CPU with 16 gigabytes of RAM and a 512 gigabyte NVMe SSD. Like if you're doing anything multi-core related, this thing absolutely screams. Like if you're some sort of developer and you're compiling code, then this thing is gonna be 
absolutely awesome to use. The one area that it kind of does suffer in is when you're doing anything in the Adobe suite, like Intel processors paired with their Iris XE still give you better results, but most CPU related tasks has an advantage on these AMD processors. Now, when it comes to heat management, it does pretty good. Like I tested this out on balanced and performance mode. When you're using balanced mode, it keeps the CPU temps under 80 degrees Celsius, but you get a nerf in clock speeds. The advantage to this is you get a very quiet laptop under 40 decibels or around 40 decibels of noise. When you kick it onto performance mode, it gets a little hot. It goes up to 90 degrees, but it doesn't do this for a very long period of time. The fans will be louder. It will slightly go over 40 decibels, but you're able to push this thing a bit more. Yes, I think HP could have been more aggressive with the tuning, but most people are just using this for every day. And I think they value fan noise a little bit more than having the maximum performance. Now, thankfully, a lot of the regular stuff you'd expect is upgradable. Like there's one slot for an NVMe SSD and you can swap this out for something bigger. The other thing is the RAM. This is not soldered onto the motherboard. So if you wanna put more RAM in here down the road, you have the option to do so. And I always love seeing two fans on an Ultrabook. I know a lot of companies tend to use only one, but even with just an integrated GPU like this one, two fans do a better job of keeping this thing cool. You have your swappable Wi-Fi 6 card, and then you have a 51 watt hour battery, which gets me about 11 hours and 44 minutes of use before needing to charge. So here's the thing, the HP Envy 15 X360 is obviously not perfect, but I don't have a ton of complaints. Yes, I do wish the screen was 16 by 10. I do wish the keyboard was more tactile, and obviously the hinges should be a bit tighter. But for the price, for an Envy being aimed towards budget to more mid-range users, I think they nailed the most important things. Fantastic performance, great battery life, and low fan noise. Like when you're running this under full load, it's not gonna bother you or the people surrounding you. So yeah, if you're interested in checking this out or have any more questions, let me know in the comment section down below. Also, if you're interested in any of those Best Buy deals, there'll be links in the description if you wanna check them out. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one.